This study is a continuation of the Gospel of John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 17. To review verses 1, through 16, see my study titled, The Gospel of John chapter 10, The Sheepfold. This will bring you up to speed, as we begin this study, at verse 17. Scripture says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Here, Jesus is saying, The Father loves me because I lay down my life, in order that I might take it again. In other words, the Son agreed to die, and also raise himself back to life, from death. Before the earth was, the Godhead, the Trinity, agreed that the Son would die for the sins of man, and afterwards raise himself back to life. His death would be by crucifixion, and his payment for the sins of man, would be by taking upon himself, for us, the wrath of God. Two things that God himself had never experienced. Him being the spirit of life, never experienced death. And him expressing his wrath towards another, never experienced his own wrath, upon himself. But for the sake of saving hopeless man, he subjected himself to these things, which he never knew, but became acquainted with. He said to them, he would allow man, to take his life, and then, he would raise it back to life again. There was a division therefore again among the Jews for these sayings. As we have seen in part one of this study, Jesus spoke to them in parables because, seeing his works, they believed not, and hearing about his works, they believed not, and therefore was willfully without understanding. This is what we call today, cognitive dissonance. But his sheep saw his works, and believed, and his sheep received word about him, and believed, therefore, his audience was divided, concerning who he was, according to what he had just said, in their hearing. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad, why hear ye him? Does this sound familiar to you? This is the same thing we do today, belittling, and smearing people, and attaching to them a negative label. This is what we call today, cancel culture. And even God himself, was labeled as being demon-possessed. So just as the truth then, was negatively labeled, censored, and canceled, by those who had cognitive dissonance, so is the truth today, being negatively labeled, censored, and canceled, by those who have cognitive dissonance. There is nothing new under the sun. Others said these are not the words of him that hath a devil, can a devil open the eyes of the blind? His sheep that believed, debating the cancel culture with the truth saying, if he has a devil, then how can he do a work of God, by causing blind eyes to see? God does not hear sinners, nor give them power to do his miracles. The reason his sheep objected, and offered the evidence of the blind man seeing, was because, in chapter 9, Jesus had just finished opening the eyes of a blind man, who was blind since birth, two or three months ago, and this chapter 10 is a remembrance of that event. And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. I think it is interesting that God gave to us, this seemingly insignificant bit of information. It said, he was at the feast of dedication, and it was winter. The feast of dedication is not one of the feasts that God gave to Israel to keep, yet Jesus was here, celebrating a secular feast, in memorial to the rededication of the temple. In the time in between the Old and New Testament, Antioch Epiphany, persecuted the Jews, and defiled the temple with a pig. God raised up Judas Maccabeus, and his band to overcome them, and he rescued Jerusalem and cleansed the temple, and rededicated it to God, and this act of heroism, was held in remembrance for the generations to come, and Jesus recognized it and celebrated it along with the people, 
even though it was a secular occasion. Now ask yourself, is it wrong to celebrate the birth of Jesus? Is not the birth of our Lord, greater than the temple building? If Jesus celebrated the rededication of the temple building, which is lesser than the birth of himself, then are we wrong to celebrate the secular Christmas season, in remembrance of the birth of Christ, which is greater than the secular rededication feast, that Jesus celebrated at the temple? This is food for thought. Are we burdening ourselves again according to the letter of the law, and not operating in the freedom we have in Christ? You decide. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. It is interesting that the people to whom the law was given, which spoke about a prophet that was to come, that would do miracles in the fashion of Moses, did not recognize him when he came, even after having works of miracles as his credentials. The miracles which he did, told them who he was, and without words, and they refused to accept it, because of their hardened hearts of cognitive dissonance. And yet he did tell them who he was plainly, and they understood and still could not hear it. In the eighth chapter of John, Jesus was teaching in the temple, and there he plainly told them, on a few occasions, who he was. Then he said to them, before Abraham was, I am. I am, is the title God gave to himself, when he told Moses to tell the people of Israel, the name of the God that would rescue them from the slavery of Egypt. So when Jesus said, I am, the people knew exactly what he meant. They heard him say, and understood him to mean, that he is God, and they became triggered, and had a meltdown, and they took up stones, to stone him. Do you see the guy on the platform, he is triggered, and having a meltdown, and is tearing his clothes upon hearing, and understanding what Jesus meant. What does this remind you of? Do you remember when Trump won the presidency? The people on the left had a meltdown, and became triggered, and lost their minds, because they did not want the truth, to be the truth, and then set out to defame him, with fake news, and to censor him, by way of the cancel culture. The same thing they did to Jesus. Just with a different method, and in a different time. There is nothing new under the sun. Now back to John, chapter 10. Here again, some months later, they asked Jesus to tell them plainly who he was. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Jesus told them in chapter 8 who he was, and they had a meltdown and attempted to stone him. And now these months later, they come again, and asked the same thing, expecting a different answer. And Jesus said, You cannot hear me, because you are not of God, you are not my sheep. In other words, their cognitive dissonance was blinding them from seeing and hearing the truth, and they were captives of their hardened hearts. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Cognitive dissonance can be a temporary condition, or a permanent condition. Plenty of Jesus' sheep came out from a state of blindness, into the light of seeing who Jesus actually is, and once that occurrence has taken place, they are given eternal life, and a place of protection in Jesus, which no man is able to take them out. And since they are in the protection of Jesus, who is also united with the Father, them the sheep are in the hand of the Father as well, and nothing is able to pluck them out of the hand of God. After Jesus had finished explaining to them about their hardness of heart, and again how he is the shepherd of the sheep, and the giver of eternal life, he plainly said to them, 
I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Okay, Jesus told them plainly who he was, as he did the first time in chapter 8, and just like then, they took up stones again, to stone him. These men hated Jesus, he was a threat to them personally, and financially, for if the people believed in him, it would take from them their honor and prestige and then, they would come to see their wealth become minimized. Therefore, they needed to have him put to death, and stoning was a way of silencing the truth. How many whistleblowers today, telling the truth, has put a target on their backs, and was found missing, or mysteriously died, thus silencing the truth? Certain services today, are multi-million dollar jobs, that keeps corporations super wealthy, but if the truth came out about their product, and the public ceases to take their merchandise, they will at all cost, censor all information that is true, that diminishes the profits of their product, thus, staying in compliance with the saying, the love of money is the root of all evil. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus, being his own defense attorney, asked the crowd of unbelievers, For which work of God that he has done, are they stoning him for? This is amazing. You can be the perfect man, having perfect love works, and still people will want to kill you, simply because of who you say, you are. And the people said, We are stoning you not because of good works, but because you made yourself equal, to God. If Jesus came, speaking not a word, but only did miracle works, that alone should have shown to them who he was, as no sinner is able to work the miracle works of God. We will stop here, and pick up here in a new study. If you would like to be known of the Shepherd Jesus, and come to know his voice. Tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then you are become a sheep of the shepherd, and he has imparted to you eternal life, and you can never be taken out from his guaranteed salvation. Thanks for watching. Are you seeing how irrelevant the Gospels are to today? Are you seeing the same things that they have experienced, are likewise becoming our experience too? Are you seeing that the more things change, the more things stay the same? Are you seeing that there is nothing new under the sun? If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. There was a division therefore again, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad, why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? Amen.